When I did the Brighting Star 50mm f0.95 lens review, they also sent me another lens, which is this 50mm f1.4 lens. This lens is designed for APS-C and micro forward cameras, and the price is only $89. So in this video, we are going to have a look at this super affordable lens and see whether this lens is worth consider buying or not. Kia ora, good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at another lens from Brighton Star. And before we start, just the usual disclaimer. This sample I'm using in this review was sent by Brighton Star. But as usual, this is a completely independent review, just like all my other reviews. This Brighton Star 50mm f1.4 lens is a fully mechanical lens that is designed for APS-C mirrorless cameras. It is probably one of the cheapest f1.4 lens in the market as the price is only $89. This lens is available for the Canon EF-M, Sony E, Nikon Z and also Fujifilm X APS-C cameras and that will give you equivalent focal length of 75mm so it's a fast short telephoto lens. It is also available for the Micro Four Third cameras as well and that will give you equivalent focal length of 100mm. The lens has a full metal construction, even the front lens cap is made of metal and the lens cap fits onto the lens very nicely. The size of this lens is reasonably small and also quite lightweight. The weight is around 300 gram and the lens has a 52mm front filter thread. Unlike the Brighting Star 50mm f0.95 lens which has all the letters engraved onto the lens, this 50mm f1.4 lens, probably because of the price is much lower, so most of the letters and markings are just printed on it, so only a few things are engraved onto the lens. We have the aperture ring at the front, and I was quite disappointed when I found out this is a declicked aperture ring, because the 50mm f0.95 lens, the aperture ring has clicks, so I thought this lens would also has clicks on the aperture ring, but turns out it is a declicked aperture ring. The aperture ring itself feels quite smooth, but I think you all know that I'm not a fan of declicked aperture ring at all. And then we have the focus ring behind that. The focus flow is around 135 degree, and the focus ring itself also feels very smooth. One thing I want to mention is when you reach the hard stop, it's not the typical hard stop. It feels like there is some rubber or plastic inside the lens, so it gives you a slightly soft feeling when the focus ring reach the end of the travel. The lens has a metal lens mount, and it has a very cool looking dark chrome coating on it, like some of the 7 Artisan lens. This is definitely great for a lens that only costs $89. And because it is a fully mechanical lens, so there is no electronic contacts at all on the lens mount, the lens also has no weather seal as you would have expected for such a budget lens. The minimum focus distance of this Brighting Star 50mm f1.4 lens is 42cm. I couldn't find any official figure about the maximum magnification ratio. But if you look at this photo that I shot at the minimum focus distance, my Lego minifigure looks pretty big. And if you get the micro forward version, the extra cropping means you can get even higher effective maximum magnification ratio. Okay, now let's have a look at the center image sharpness. At the maximum aperture f1.4, the center sharpness is surprisingly good. Zoom in the photo, look at the center at 200% and it is still very sharp. The only thing is there's a little bit of color fringing. If you look at the words press on to play next to the Mario, there's a bit of purple color fringing, but otherwise the center sharpness and the image quality is really great even at f1.4. Once I stop down to f2, then those letters that was a little bit purple before now turn to solid black and the image sharpness is excellent. And that would remain like that even when I stop down further until diffraction kicks in. And now let's have a look at the corner. At f1.4, the corner is a little bit soft, but I think it's still very usable. 
Surprisingly, I don't see more chromatic aberration than the center at f1.4. And as you stop down the lens, the corner sharpness would gradually improve. And by f4, the corner sharpness becomes excellent. For a fast budget prime lens, chromatic aberration is very well controlled. Look at my real world high contrast photo that I shot on some sunny days at f1.4. I thought there would be quite a lot of color fringing, but turns out it is at a pretty low level. And if we look at this set of photos at f1.4, there's some small hint of chromatic aberration. However, as soon as I stop down to f2, then chromatic aberration is pretty much all gone. Longitude chromatic aberration also seems to be quite well controlled. I can only see small amount of loca in all my photos. With the fast f1.4 maximum aperture and 15mm focal length, you can blur the background quite easily when your subject is a few meters away. Bokeh from this lens looks quite nice and not too busy even though there is a bit of highlight at the border of the bokeh balls. When shooting at the maximum aperture, the bokeh has a bit of swirly cat's eye effect especially the foreground bokeh that is more noticeable. If you don't like that kind of effect, you could stop down to f2 to minimize that. Vignetting is really well controlled by this lens. Even at the maximum aperture f1.4, vignetting is already not very noticeable. When stop down to f2, vignetting is mostly gone. And from f2.8 onwards, even when you look at this plain wall photo, vignetting is virtually not noticeable. In terms of distortion, if you look at this real world photo and also my brick wall test photo, there is a small amount of barrel distortion. This can be mostly corrected by applying a plus six distortion correction in Lightroom. Just like a lot of other budget lenses, the biggest weakness of this Brighting Star 15mm f1.4 lens would be its lens flare performance. When you are shooting into a bright light source, you can quite easily get some very noticeable ring shaped lens flare in your photo. This could also happen when the light source is just outside the frame. The lens flare looked okay to me. I definitely won't say I like it but it doesn't look too horrible either. Stop down the lens to f2 could easily remove or at least minimize the amount of lens flare. I do really hope budget lenses like this will come with a lens hood because a lot of time budget lenses biggest weakness is the lens flare. While a lens hood wouldn't solve all the lens flare issues, especially if you're shooting directly into a bright light source, but it could help minimize lens flare in a lot of situations. To get sun stars from this Brighting Star 15mm lens, you need to stop down the lens to at least f5.6. And at f8, sun stars is already quite nice and quite sharp. Because of the 9 aperture brace, you get 18 points sun stars from this lens. I personally prefer sun stars that is a little bit simpler. But if you don't mind or actually like 18 pound sun stars, then the sun stars from this lens does look pretty sharp, especially when you're shooting at the minimum aperture f16. Comma is pretty noticeable at f1.4. I can see those butterfly shaped pattern quite easily when shooting at the maximum aperture. When stop down to f2, comma would reduce quite a lot. And when you stop down to f2.8, then comma becomes not really noticeable. Videographers would love the decorated aperture ring and the smooth focus ring on this Brighting Star lens. However, focus breathing appears to be quite a bit more than average. Let's check out this test footage when I change the focus from 1 meter to infinity. Focus breathing is quite noticeable. Okay, so this is the second time I review a lens from Brighting Star. Let's talk about what I like the most and don't like the most about this lens first. The thing I really like about this lens is the image quality is already very usable at the maximum aperture f1.4. I would be perfectly happy to shoot photo with this lens at f1.4. 
unless I want to really minimize the chromatic aberration and improve the corner sharpness, then I may stop down the lens to f2. And this lens is also a very cheap way for you to achieve a shadow depth of field effect on your APS-C or Micro Four Third camera. And what I don't really like, the first thing would be lens flare. Lens flare is really strong with this lens, especially when you are shooting at the maximum aperture, you could quite easily get lens flare in your photo or video. And then the second thing I don't really like is the declicted aperture ring. Videographers would probably like it, but for photographers, it make it really quite hard and annoying to use. Overall, in terms of image quality, lens flare could be better controlled but everything else is as good as I can hope for. For only $89, I shouldn't really complain too much and it is truly great value for money. However, I do really wish the aperture ring has clicks as then it would make it a perfect budget lens for people who want to get some shallow depth of field effect without having to spend a lot of money.